out on the participant panel and then if more folks come in we'll let them in but we're gonna go ahead and get started so good morning everyone and uh, you'll notice that there is a little slide for you when you first come into the session first view it it just tells talks about the different areas we're going to be visiting today the different resources we're going to be touching upon so you'll see that we have the join the Nearpod. So Wendy, I don't know if you're familiar with Nearpod. It is not a GPV product. It's not something that I sell or anything. It's just a really great way I found for presenting in a virtual environment. It's a way for the presenter or the teacher to organize their thoughts and their resources into one area and then present that either synchronously like we're doing, or you can even send a student case lesson and present asynchronously so your kids can go through it throughout the week. Uh, there is a silver level for Nearpod, which is pretty much what I'm going to show you today. The only thing I think is different is you can't embed a website, but you can put a slide that says go to this website you know, now if you need to. Um, so you can give your kids directions to access you know, a piece of content if you want to do that. So just keep in mind this may be something useful because it is interactive. If you want to join the Nearpod session today, I do have some games and things that I've embedded into it. So you can go to join.nearpod.com. You don't need an account or anything. And then you just enter the code GJHDCE, which is right here up in the top. So that's one thing to think of if you just want to sort of experience what it might be like for your kids to be on the other end, because you'll be my kids today. So you can see what it's like to be on the student presenting, student end of it, and what it feels like to you know, have that, that connection with your teacher. You'll also notice on the, the uh, Nearpod that there's a little digital pen and paper in the upper right-hand corner, and you can take notes. So obviously your, your kids probably won't be doing this in early childhood, but as a teacher today, if you want to, you can take little notes on every slide. So again, it's just today is really PD and also for you to experience what it's like. All of the resources we're going through today, um, plus more, I've also put together on a resource list. So the second point you'll see on that slide is if you'd like to go to this shortened URL at Bitly, you can access the resource list. I've also embedded it into this Nearpod, so when we get to the end of the session, you'll be able to see it. But it looks basically like this. It's kind of like an agenda, um, and it really just goes through all of the resources we'll be visiting today, but in a different format. So you don't have to go through the Nearpod slide by slide to get to them. You can just go to this document, and you can click on the links in the document. And there's a description of each one, talks about, you know, what their focus is, their grade level. So again, it's just another resource for you all to use throughout the year. You're welcome to, Don, if, Donald, if you want to distribute this to your teachers, it's, it's just something we created. We're not gonna delete it or get rid of it. We'll add to it and it'll just be an ongoing resource for everyone. So keep that in mind too. And then the third thing is just, we will be on PBS Learning Media pretty much the whole time today. So pbslearningmedia.org. And if you'd like to go there and create a free account, if you haven't already, again, it's completely free. You don't need a code or anything. You just sign up with Google or with Facebook or with your email and you can create an account and then you can start to build content, make favorites, uh, create folders. You can make um, your games and quizzes. So again, it's just another learning management system with lots of fun teacher tools. The cool thing about PBS Learning Media is it takes PBS material like Daniel Tiger or the Kratt Brothers or um, for social studies, you know, like Xavier Riddle, and it, it pairs them with teacher content. So it puts them with assessments and activities and questions and games. And so you can take those, those the material that your kids already love, you know, they already watch Xavier Riddle on television or they already watch Sesame Street on television and it pairs it with lesson plans so that you can say, okay, guys, today we're going to learn about, you know, this topic, like the a life cycle of plants and we're going to do it you know in conjunction Good morning. with Parade will be here in about five minutes would you like is that wendy they're doing a uh, okay. they're, they're um, doing a, a school parade today the the um first responders fire firemen and police officers are coming by to different uh educational sites uh just to show their support for the for the teachers um and apparently they were coming by here today too so Oh, okay. Uh, that, that was the announcement to come out. <laughs> oh, gotcha, gotcha. So you can uh, peel away and go clap your hands in the hallway during that portion. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. So, so as I was mentioning, yeah, so you can take um, you know, some of these science resources, nature cat and things, and you can put them into the classroom. So it's really great to get your kids engaged because they already trust and love these characters. And when they see that they also are learning about, you know, life cycles, 
It makes them more excited, especially for this early childhood education. It's a great age group for bringing in those PBS kids stories. So that's just a summary of where, where we'll be visiting today. Let me know if you have any questions, throw them in the chat or just speak up um, since we're all together. And um, just to, to, again, to introduce myself, I'm Tracy Wiley with Georgia Public Broadcasting. And so uh, Donald and I have worked together for four years now. Yeah, yeah it's been a while. <laughs> um, and so we see, each other. we see each other, yeah, once or twice a year, we usually get together. And today, you know, we're just virtual. So it's a new, a new age. But um, so thank you for inviting me to come out today, Donald, and, and share some of the resources. We have lots of new things. And so it's exciting to be here at the beginning of the year. Um, so Wendy and, and friends, for when this is recorded, just keep in mind you can reach out to me anytime with questions about any of our resources and happy to help and support you guys as well. All right, so uh, our, our goals today become familiar specifically with early childhood. So it's K through one that Donald has asked me to focus on today, early childhood education, pre-K to one. And we're going to look at the content that GPB provides free of charge online. And then we're gonna explore some ideas for virtual learning specifically especially some ready to go online assignments and some teaching tools and games and things. So I've highlighted my favorites, that resource list uh, gives you even more. Um, we're just kind of going to go in together and I'll show you around. So again, please keep those questions coming. So here's what PBS Learning Media looks like. I have it signed in. You don't have to sign in to access the content. So if you find a video or a link to anything you can just share that link with your kids and your parents. They don't have to have an account. It is wide open. Only reason that we say um, for students and teachers to sign in is because you can have that interaction um, and you can, again, share your favorites and things. So I'd recommend signing in. It just takes a few minutes and it's free. And I would even recommend for students to do it. And Donald, we talk, Phil and I talked yesterday about um, they do have free single sign-on. I know we tried that with Discovery Ed, um, but you guys have Clever. They do have free Clever single sign-on. So we can maybe try that with PBS. Sure. And, and, you know, again, teachers and kids could just click on and they wouldn't have to go through the, the, you know, the challenge of signing up for an account. Yeah, we can get that done. Yeah, so we'll, we'll look at that too. I'm going to send Philip and I'll send you to um, all the information about how to do that. So uh, this is what it looks like. You can, if you click on the search for nothing, like you can click, you can search for a keyword, of course, but if you search for nothing, it'll pull up everything. We've got 32,000 results today. It'll, this is just all that's available on the left. You can, of course, start narrowing down by grade. So if we do pre-K to one, we have 5,000, more than 5,000 results. And then you can start narrowing down by science. So it kind of gets you to narrow down 1,500 results. And then you can pick videos or games or lesson plans. So again, there's ways that you can kind of narrow down what you're looking for. You can also, of course, search by a particular keyword um, to go with your standards. Um, you'll see, notice here at the top two, you can search by subject. So if you want to search by subject, science, and um, you know, this one, of course, early childhood is, is across the board. So earth, space, and life, earth, uh, physical, and life. But you can see that there are 6,008 videos alone just on science. So it's a very, very rich uh, resource. You can also search by grade. So you can just search by your pre-K or early elementary. And you can search by standard, too. So different ways to find your way around. And you'll notice on the home page that they do highlight uh, a resource by grade band um, or by topic area. So, you know, every day they'll change. So today it's how to search for life uh, for grades one through six in science here. So you can look there for ideas too. And as I mentioned, um, there are uh, GSE alignments throughout this. I haven't, it's, you can't sign in with Nearpod, but if you do sign in, you know, just on your regular account, you that receives. And so if you, you can search by standard or you can find a video you like and just see, oh, I wonder you know, what standards this aligns to. So I'll go ahead and sign in. Sorry to do this before. So I'll be able to show you that. I'll jump out in your pod and show you that. So any questions about PBS or anything before we move on? Tracy, just to, to clarify, um, if the teachers want to assign a resource to the teacher to the students all they need to do is just share the link in Google Classroom or however else they would share the link um, yeah absolutely so let's just um, just to give you an example um, I'm just gonna go into subjects and do science here and I'm gonna pick um, let's do kindergarten okay. yep. and I'm just gonna pick like the first one that pops up so we've got the Sun is the first video that pops up here I can download this uh -huh. so that's one way they can do it 
um, or I can share it to Google Classroom via this little green and yellow button here. Or if you do put, if you do, we do Clever, we do single sign Clever, you can assign it that way through this assign or share button. here. Um, or I can just, like you said, I can just literally go up here, copy the URL, and then paste it somewhere. Okay. So Discovery Ed required, um, you know, everyone to have accounts because it's a paid service. They're, you know, commercial service, but PBS, of course, is open, so it doesn't require any login. It's just nice to be able to organize your, your content. So here in my content, up here where it says Tracy in the upper right-hand corner, I've created all my favorites. So like I have all these, these things that I've marked as my favorites. So if I want to go and find my favorite content, it'll pull it up. And I also have folders. So you can see I have folders of animals and eBooks and literacy and math. So you can make folders. It's just a, a great way to organize the content. And all my tools are up here. I can build lessons and make quizzes and storyboards. So if you have an account, you can do all that. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is some earth and space science. So I broke this into three different sections since you guys have to cover it all. And then the first um, uh, sort of resource I wanted to show you all is about weather. So a lot of, um, I've, what I've done is I've identified some collections that I thought were really useful because they have so much content and it's all standards aligned. So I found some collections and I've also highlighted a few um, individual pieces of content that are aligned to standards. They're all aligned, but I've sort of honed in on a few standards. So this is the collection for weather. And you can see on the left here, um, I opened up grades K through two. So I can look into waves and light. I can look into space and earth systems or weather in this case. And you can see um, it, this collection has five videos, a lesson plan, three media galleries, one interactive lesson, which is bilingual, an image, and three interactive games. So it's, just, it's kind of a small mini lesson, a mini collection of weather. But here's the lesson plan, what is weather? Learn how weather is a combination of four factors. It's for grades K through two. And you'll see it comes with supportive materials. So if I click on it, it has a you know, procedure here. It is a lesson plan, support materials, or handouts for diverse learners teachers. Um, so we got vocabulary, another handout, some weather book ideas. So it's eight different support materials that go with this one, just this one piece of content. So you can see it's, it's pretty comprehensive. If you're teaching this area, you don't have to reinvent the wheel or buy anything. It's all this free content that's already available to you. I taught um, elementary science and I didn't know that this existed and I made everything myself um, from hours and hours on Google. And I really wish I'd known about these resources. It would have saved me so much time. Um, and I taught, you know, elementary science for, for uh, 20 years. So <laughs> it was a lot of time that I used up, um, but I wish I had known about this. So that's just one example of the type of, you know, content that is available for you um, as you kind of explore it and, and get an idea of what, what you can see. I don't know if you had any questions about that particular resource. Go back into it. So weather, K through two, or if you want to see any of the others, that was the lesson plan. Here's the interactive lesson. Um, there's also a media gallery. Uh, most of these are interactive, so very hands-on where your kids can go in and play on the computer. Peep in the big wide world, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but that's another really fun um, resource about these chickens that go and explore. <laughs> um, again, a lot of science, and I, I think it's very well done, very cute. and. Um, even for adults, it's not, it's, it's, it's fun even to watch as an adult. So I did want to show you this one lesson plan, which I think is, is really great. Um, so we're going to look at, there's two of them actually, I think I'm going to do this one, the a look at weather factors. So this is uh, for K through two. An interactive lesson is something new in PBS. I think they're really, really well done. You do have to do these through Google Classroom or through single sign-on because they save student work. So this is the only thing where you would have to have a student account because otherwise there's no way for the system to know that this is, you know, Johnny's account versus um, Meredith's account. So there's no way to, to, to link it with the kids unless they have an account either in Google Classroom or single sign-on. But the reason why this may be worth it is because these, these lessons are really, really well done and they're complete again. So here's what it looks like. So you can see this is, it's nine pages long and the menu here tells you what's on each page. So what is the weather? This is about mood, wind, what you see in the sky, hot and cold, water, different types of weather, how to dress for it. So again, it's a whole lesson plan about weather. The student work is saved here, so that's why you need individual accounts. And here's a glossary which has some terms, breeze, cold, gust, meteorologist, so it defines all those terms that appear in the lesson plan. 
So you can see here's the text, you know, it's pretty uh, straightforward. It's an introduction to weather. That's just the first page. So it's, I think it's very um, grade, grade band appropriate. And then here's some images that they can explore. They can click on them and see, you know, the images here. <clears throat> Trying to figure out when things are in near pots a little bit. There we go. And then um, so you, again, there's some glossary terms that are embedded into this. So just just some a very basic introduction again. You advance to the third page. It's what is weather. I'm trying to get to advance. There we go. This is about wind, and so it talks about wind. And there's a peep in. The big wide world video just about wind and this one is a minute and a half so again very very short there's closed captioning and of course um, they can listen to it and watch the video that's the third page fourth page is about clouds and storms and so again another peep in the big wide world video and then here's an activity one of the first activities click on visualize it to find clues that tell you about sun and clouds when they click on this it says, choose a color. Here's the instructions again. Choose a color, click on it, and then draw a circle around two clues that tell you about sun and clouds. So they can pick a color, and then they can draw, okay, so maybe this is telling me this is a storm cloud right here. And then this one right over here is like a cumulus sunny cloud. So it's just a way for them to interact. Um, and of course, they can you know, do whatever they want to, right? Because they're playing around with this. So that's just an example of the, how interactive it is. Kind of fun. So that was page four. Page five is about hot and cold. So again, we've got a little video about people in the big wide world. So it is pretty consistent. And here's another visualize to find clues that tell you about temperature. So click on a circle around two clues that tell you about temperature. So same kind of thing. They can go, okay, this is hot. This over here is the shade. It's cold. So again, just a way for them to explore. And they'll share their work with you so you can see how they're doing. Another video, this is about snow and, and precipitation. Oh, another visualize it. <laughs> so again, two clues to tell you about snow and rain. So they're all um, images from the video and they can interact with the images. So you kind of get an idea how this works. And then when they're done, they submit you know, their lesson plan and you get to see it and you can see what they've learned. I think um, there's a final activity at the end. Usually these have a final, I'm trying to get to the end. Dress for the weather, that's fun. Oh, arrange it, oh, this is a good one, I remember this one. So with arrange it, you get to decide what kind of clothes, you know, go with which weather. It's kind of fun, and maybe that goes with that one. Put him over there, put him, put her, put him there, put her over there. So it's kind of fun too. So obviously I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this. <laughs> and then the last page is review, so. It's uh, just a little review and find clues. How do you think the weather changed? So that gives you an idea of what an interactive lesson plan looks like. And so on those days where you may not have um, you know, material, this is great, something you could do asynchronously with your kids, assign it to them, give them a week or so or a few days to work on it and then get their work back. It's a great summary activity. Any thoughts on that, Donald? Uh, no, uh, uh, Wendy, so we, we're gonna have to work on um, getting the um, clever, log in for the PBS Learning Media so that you guys can, if this is something that you think is, is valuable. Um, uh, I know um, right now it seems daunting to get the kids um, to do that, um, but um, I think we can, we can make that work. And I see that she had a question in the chat. Let's see, once we share a lesson to Google Classroom, did you say that the students will have to make an account with PBS Learning? Um, go ahead, do you yeah. wanna take that, Tracy? Yeah. It's, it's one or the other. So if you have Google Classroom, it's easy. All you have to do is share it to Google Classroom. I mean, I'll, I'll see if I can, if it'll work. So what I'm gonna do is um, hit the share to Google Classroom here. See if you, tell me if you can see it through the Nearpod. Um, sometimes with Zoom, I'm not sure what I'm presenting. Can you guys see share to Classroom on the screen? Uh, I can see it on the Zoom. I can't see it on the Nearpod. Okay, great. So you can see it in front of you. Yes. So it says share to classroom, choose class. So I'm just gonna go and choose my class, choose my action. Yeah, I can create an assignment and then I can hit go. And then there it is right there. I can make it for all my students, 100 points, make it due you know, on Friday. And topic is gonna be, I'm not sure. So I'm going to go ahead and assign it. Right, oh, title, I go title, yeah. 
So um, weather lesson plan, there we go. So now I can assign it. So it should be that easy. And now they've got it and then they can, I post it to my class so I can go and see what they've done. Um, and so, yeah. Yeah. And so now, all about, what's that? So Tracy, so now when the, the students go and log in or when they, if they log into Google Classroom, click on that weather lesson plan link, then they will be able, the teachers will be able to see the work that the, the students have done. Yes. That, yeah. Yes. Good. That's easy. Yeah. So, yeah, I've, I've seen it what I've seen it before with teachers during like when we were in person learning, some teachers showed it to me and it's very, very simple. Yeah. Good. So and if you, you know, if you see anything, let me know if you do start to use it, see some issues, but I have not heard any feedback that it, there's any problems with it. Yeah. Okay. So do most so of your teachers have Google Classroom? Yeah, everybody in the district has access to Google Classroom, uh, whether they use it or not is, um, you know, that's up to the individual teacher, but we recommend it. Um, okay. So everybody has access. Um, it's just, we gotta convince some folks to, to use it, so. Yeah, okay, well they can do that. If we don't end up doing Clever, then they have access, they can do it through Google Classroom. It's already very, very simple. All right. And there are many, many of those. So um, let me just show you, for instance, all, if you wanted to find other interactive lessons, um, I will just do it this way again. Go to subject, click on science again, filter by grade. Let's do pre-K through two, you know, just to make sure we got a nice little spread there. And then under type here, you would type interactive lesson. And so you can see there are 24 that are appropriate for pre-K through two. Motion, states and matter, web, hot water, cold water, magnets, wind, so recycling, lots of stuff here. So um, that's a good place again, 24 should keep them busy for a while um, if you can, if they align to your standards. All right, so back to the Nearpod. So another uh, resource I wanted to highlight is everyday learning. This is one of my favorites. Again, I use this a lot um, in my PD sessions. So there's a, a whole section, everyday science for preschoolers. Um, and again, the, the, the videos are narrated by children. They're very uh, colorful, they're slow, but they're engaging, um, just really well done. So you can see that, and they all come with supportive materials. So this first one, how a frog becomes a frog, a minute, 52 seconds. It comes with four support materials. So if I click on this one, you'll see that again, you can download it. It is, uh, the support materials include background reading, discussion questions and activity, you can share it with Google Classroom. And I've listened to all of these. They are really very, very sweet and, and well done. So I highly recommend these, the Everyday Learning Collection. And this collection, um, again, it's, it's, uh, it, it's not just the animated, there are also other live action. So this particular one on clouds and weather, I'd wanted to highlight because it kind of goes with the theme. But you can see with this one, it's live action. So it is with cotton balls and paper, um, but they do a really good job. Oh, sorry, I'm go back. Oh, no, that's where it is. So um, it, this was the standard I was kind of focusing on, S1E1, obtain, evaluate, and communicate weather data to identify weather patterns. And so I think this is where, yeah, this is the everyday learning one. Um, and those are support materials, background reading activity. And I'm just going to play uh, just the beginning of it so you can kind of see what these videos are like. Again, I just think they're really well done. So I'm just going to play so you can get a flavor of it. Clouds and weather. So it's closed captioning. There are many types of clouds. They help you tell what the weather might be like. Cirrus clouds are thin and wispy. They can look like ribbons or even a horse's tail. They appear high in the sky and are made of ice droplets. Cirrus clouds point in the direction that the wind is blowing. They appear in sunny weather, but when they show up, you know a weather change is coming. You can see it's just kind of a, a, a nice video, two minutes long, just a good summary of clouds and the types of clouds. It's just an example of the type of content here. Um, here's another one which also uh, goes with the, that standard, Let's Be Scientists. I really like this one because it talks about the scientific process and about inquiry learning and about tools and things you use as scientists. So in, in that weather-based um, weather standard, it does talk a lot about measuring weather. And so this one goes into that about what it means to be a scientist and why we measure things and observe things. Um, and so it's a good introduction to science in general. 
this is a little bit different. So Let's be scientists. I'll, pop, I'll do a little bit of this one so you can see it's all still everyday learning, but this is their animated version. This one's, again, less than two minutes. Today I'm a scientist. Do you want to be a scientist too? Let's start with my dog, Potato. When she's thirsty, I fill up her bowl with water, and she takes a big slurp. My mom's plant is looking thirsty too. Let's predict what will happen if I put Potato's bowl next to it. It's not drinking. Hmm. Do you think I should put more water in the flower pot? Oh, that's much better. You can see it's just real simple, this whole idea that everyday learning, right? Like as we go about our everydays, we can be scientists and make observations. So it's just another way to kind of get your kids thinking about science in a you know, very engaging way, not be scared of science, but realize that it's just part of um, everyday adventure. So I really like their series for that too. All right, so I wanted to share with you one activity that could be done with your kids in a virtual environment. It's called Paper Slide. Have you ever done this, Donald? It's a lot of fun. So basically kids make videos based on their illustrations. So you don't need a lot of words to do this. Um, the, the, show, the, the video I'm gonna show you, the kids are a little bit older and so they are using words, but you can also do it with just illustrations. So just imagine your kids just drawing pictures and then, and then narrating them. And this is something parents can easily help with. All you need is a phone and some, some pictures. So basically the kids use the pictures as slides. So they might draw you know, five or six pictures and then they just move them away from the front of the phone as a slide, like a slideshow. And so it's a great way for kids to share what they've learned about something with minimal writing and reading, um, but they can of course highlight things with, with individual vocabulary words. So I'm just gonna show you um, an example of one. Again, it was done by older kids and I'm gonna turn it down a little bit because these kids are really, really enthusiastic. And um, the very first minute, you're gonna jump out of your seats if I don't. So just be warned when they go in. So you can see they're older, they have a lot of writing in their slides, but your kids, of course, could still draw a picture of a cumulonimbus cloud. Um, this is something that littles could do even, or maybe even write the word cumulonimbus and maybe not write out you know, all the different description of it. So just keep an idea of how versatile this particular strategy is um, for elementary as well as early elementary. Okay, here you go, be warned. about clouds. The type of clouds are stratus cloud, cumulonimbus clouds, cirrus cloud, and cumulus clouds. Stratus. Stratus clouds produce only drizzle or fine snow, if anything. These clouds often blanket the entire sky with a dull gray color. Cumulus clouds look like white cotton balls or cauliflower heads, and usually cirrus. Steaming cirrus clouds are also called mare's tails. A gradually increasing cover of cirrus clouds may indicate an approaching warm front. Cumulonimbus, also called thunderheads. Cumulonimbus clouds have bases that are usually dark. And their tops often resemble the shape of an anvil. So can you believe how long that word is? I know, right, man? And as you can see the picture, cumulonimbus clouds produce bad weather as of thunder or precipitation and lightning. And lightning. See? Boom. This presentation was made by Joe Whitehead, Haley Muhammad, and Taj Joe. Thank, Thank you for, you for watching. watching. Bye, AJ, for that. Have a great rest of your day. Oops, sorry. I just love that video because they're so enthusiastic. I know, you know, we can't be together right now, but kids can still do this individually or maybe put some videos together, but they're so enthusiastic about it. Um, and I love that there are, I, I believe the teacher probably made a rubric, so they have to introduce themselves. They have to, you know, at the end, thank everyone for watching. So it also kind of teaches these social, emotional learning, these courtesy, how do you do public speaking? But it's very informal. You know, they're chatting with each other during it. You know, the, the, the phone is shaking. So there's not, it doesn't have to be a professional presentation. It's something simple that kids can do at home. Even with an older sibling, right? If their parents aren't available, an older kid can hold the phone for them. I know yeah. this because my kids do this. <laughs> See, let me, let me jump in here too. Um, so 
um, we can do um, Flipgrid, use Flipgrid to record this. Yeah. So, you know, my thoughts are that the kids would hold up their, their slide um, and, you know, talk about it. Um, and then Flipgrid, especially for um, K through two, is super easy for everybody to be able to use. Um, and they don't have to have a separate device um, to use it. Mm. Um, they can do it with their, with their Chromebook. Um, so um, I love this this concept, and um, I, I'm totally going to take it and run off with it. Oh, good! Great. Um, but yeah, so I, was, I, I don't know. Not Flipgrid. I need to learn it because it's it's definitely becoming the thing. Super easy, especially for the younger kids, mm -hmm. um, because there's, there's a big green button and a big red button, you know. Um, right. And that the the what a lot, my wife does, she uses it um, with kindergartners and, and first graders. Um, and they do um, book uh, reviews. Um, you know, they talk about their favorite book and they hold their book up and talk about, you know, their favorite page and that kind of stuff. Um, and it's so easy for them to do and they, they really enjoy doing that. Um, plus, they can do stuff like, you know, put sunglasses on or, or whatever <laughs> virtually. Uh, so, yeah, that, I love this, this concept. I'm going to share this around. Yeah, that's great because even with something like this, I mean, like you said, they're talking about clouds. So you could put, they could hold up an umbrella for you know the 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 cumulonimbus cloud, or they could put on their sunglasses for um, a, a cumulus cloud. So yeah, that's a great idea. Thank yep. you. All right. So that was kind of just one area of weather, just a focus uh, that I really wanted to to focus on. And, and I think we've got questions and ideas. Oh, I see some chats. So Wendy's jumping in. Oh, I think that was from the old. Okay, trying to keep up. <laughs> Sorry, Wendy. All right, so the next one's physical science. And again, I'm just highlighting a few things. There are literally hundreds and hundreds of different uh, pieces of, of content. I'm just trying to highlight a few so you can see what's available. And um, Donald, I mentioned this to Phil, that if you want me to come back later um, and do something in the pacing guide, like if you say specifically, they're working on this standard and like what I did before, can you help find content around this one standard on weather or this one standard yeah. on magnetism? Then I'm happy to do that and do like a PD just on, on that one standard. Okay. That would help. Okay, so Ruff Rothman, another great PBS kids show that your kids are probably familiar with. Um, he's very z goofy and zany um, and does lots of work with uh, physical science. You can see on the left here, he's got kitchen chemistry, sports science, structures, wearable science. And um, so I went through with some of these and found uh, some content that goes really well with this additional kindergarten. And is Wendy kindergarten or first grade? Kindergarten. No. Oh, she is great. Okay. Because I was saying she's first grade. She's waiting. I'll have to probably should jump to that. So kindergarten, obtain, evaluate, and communicate information to describe objects in terms of the materials they are made of and their physical attributes. So that's uh, the standard we're going to focus on for this content. And what I found for this is this great, again, it's really difficult, I guess, to, uh, to do some of this idea of materials in a virtual environment. Um, of course, you can hold up things and talk about, you know, hard and soft and, and demonstrate them online. But this was a great game where they actually have to dress this rhino in materials. So you can see he's holding in his hands, even though it's animated, he's holding actual photos of a wrench and a sponge and paper in his hands. So it's actual pictures of these things that have different, that are made of different materials. So when you go into this game, it's, it's a real hoot. He has to dress the rhino for different um, experiences. And so he has to pick the correct material to, to prepare the rhino for what he's about to go into. You can see again, he's got his little friend um, who's going to help him. So I'm going to go ahead and just click a little bit on this. This is just a game um, from PBS Kids that is embedded in PBS Learning Media. It's part of the Rough Ruffman Show. Are you familiar with Rough Ruffman, Donald? I am. I am. Kids, I need your help. I'm pet sitting for Fluff the Rhino, who isn't small or a pet. <laughs> and I have to keep him busy so Blossom doesn't find out. Help me dress up Fluff so he's ready for our adventures. All right, here we go. Which adventure do you want to try? So you can see he has to choose, does he want to dress up Fluff for the snow? Or does he want to dress up Fluff you know, for, for this one for dancing? So again, it just kind of talks about different materials. Let's do, I'm going to do the dancing Disco one. party. Disco party. Fluff is going to a disco dance party. Cover him in something shiny so the light will bounce off. Again, That's the material you think Fluff should wear for his adventure. 
a material is the stuff that things are made of. I just think it's really on target for that for that uh, that standard. So I can either put him in a, a sponge, or I can put him in a leaf, or I can put him in a a wretch. I have to figure out which one is shiny. I'm gonna go with the metal. Steel is a strong silvery metal. It's used to make things like bridges and cars. Tap on fluff and then color him with the material. Ah. I'm covering him with steel. Isn't that yes. cool? Yes. So Love it. To make him shiny, so he will. You know, the dis disco ball will bounce Whoa, off Oh, what an outfit! <laughs> that was great. <laughs> so now what do you predict will happen when you test this material? Tap so, the disco ball to shine light at fluff. You see how it paused first and asked for that prediction. So again, it's the whole scientific process. So I think it's, he's going to be shiny. Yay! Is steel shiny? Is Tap steel the button shiny? to write down. <laughs> The it's light still, is bouncing off. So it's still shiny, yes. I believe and, it is. Isn't this great? Yes. Yeah. Steel is shiny. And there's my results. Awesome documenting skills. Your chart is filling up with results from all your tests. So do you want to see what happens if I do it wrong, or you want to Pencil move on? Sitting is a blast. Yeah. Thanks to you, you found out that steel is shiny. Let's see what happens if we get it wrong. Choose okay. an yes. adventure. Yeah. Do you guys want to choose an adventure? Which one? Which one you want? Uh, uh, what's the apples one? Let's try that. Okay. Apple picking. Apple picking. All right. Let's see what happens. Fluff is going apple picking. Cover him in something hard so falling apples won't hurt him. Oh, that's great. Let's color. Okay. So we have to do something hard, but we're going to go against it. We're going to do something soft. Um, yeah. so this looks like a brick. Brick, bird, paper. Let's do the bird. Okay. Cover him in birds. What cover a bird's body? Feathers. Most birds Feathers. have them. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, see, I haven't played this one. So, yeah, so um, so it's a feather. We'll see what happens when we cover him with feathers. And the kids at this point may be like, uh, I'm not sure if feathers are. Yeah. Oh, look, he's a, he really has feathers. Feathers. <laughs> see them? That's so cool. Okay, what happens? <laughs> what do you predict will happen when you test this material? Tap to shake apples off the tree. There you go, it's gonna happen. Oh no, this is very Are feathers hard? <laughs> Tap the button to document what happened. The no. apples hurt fluff. The objects hurt fluff. You found oh, out no. that feathers are not hard. But Why do you it. think that material didn't I love work? Because we're failing forward, right? That's okay. right. Yeah. Why do you think it didn't work? So anyway, that's just one example. There are a lot of them, as I mentioned, and that's just one that I, I just thought was especially cute um, to demonstrate that particular standard. And your kids can do this again with you or without you synchronously or asynchronously. All right, so the, the next thing I wanted to show you guys, and Donald, we're going to, it was an hour, right? Full time? Yes. Okay. Yep. So the next one, SKP2. Obtain, evaluate, and communicate information to compare and describe different types of motion. And we're still doing rough Ruffman because this is he's got a, quite a few things. So this one's called Plushy on Ice. And again, this is about movement. And so in this video, we won't watch it, but you can see it's got the standards alignment. You can download it, you can share it. But basically his plushy toy has gotten stuck on the ice in the zoo, and he has to figure out how to move it in order to get it back to him. He has to get it back to himself. So he's trying to figure out how to move it on the ice um, and how to, to help the penguins, get the penguins to help him. So it's all about movement and friction. Um, so the video kind of goes into that. And then again, there's another game and it's called Fish Force. You can see, use science inquiry to predict and investigate forces in motion to help rescue Ruff's plushie from the penguin's ice rink. So again, it's just another fun way to demonstrate force and motion in this adventure game where the kids are having to rescue this plushie. So if they know Ruff Ruffman, if they like him, and you, again, start to bring this into the classroom, you have support materials that go with it, you've got this little activity, the Ruff Ruffman plushie and game activity that goes with it as well. If I click on that, you can see it's a little something they can do with socks and scissors, so maybe even something at home you could try. Um, so again, just lots of, of, of supportive materials. I won't play that since we've spent some time with it, but it's, it's like the rhino game. It's just you're trying to, to, to throw fish at the plushie and get the penguins to help you move them off the ice. All right.
So I'm gonna pause there to see if there's anything else that you guys wanna share, or if you wanna do the plushie game, I'm happy to go back. But to find that, so just to find it, just to let you know, um, I'm gonna go and do a search for rough, because there's not many words that start with rough, so I'm gonna just do rough. And um, you can hit collection here, and it'll pull up the whole collection that I have, the Rough Ruffman Show Science. Ruff Ruffman Humble Media Genius and Fetch as well. I got it from the Ruff Ruffman Show Science. So if you click on that, there's sports science here on the left. And then there it is, plushie on ice video. And then the uh, plushie fish force game. So if you're looking for Ruff Ruffman, or you could do a uh, search for force as well. And then you can go over here on the left and click on interactives. And there it is, Fish Force. So it just depends on what you're looking for. So if you just want games, like, like we just showed, then I found the Fish Force game that way. It's very easy to use. All right, live science, last one. So kindergarten, obtain, evaluate, and communicate information to compare the similarities and differences in groups and organisms. So instruction arguments supported by evidence for how animals can be grouped according to their features. So for life science, for this one, again, I went to everyday learning. Uh, this is a really great video called, What is an Insect? And what we're gonna do with this one is an activity, it's called Vocabulary Scavenger Hunt. So this is really to help kids learn new words. And so they may know the word insect, um, or they may not, they may use the word bug, but they may not necessarily know the difference between like a bug and an insect per se. And so as you're going into that characteristics of animals, um, this is a great video for talking about the characteristics of insects. And I don't know if you guys know that head, shoulders, knees, and toes song, but it's head, thorax, abdomen, that one. Abdomen, head, thorax, abdomen. Yes, yeah, I taught science, obviously. Six legs, four wings, exoskeletons. So that's a good way for them to, you know, another song, but this goes into those points, six legs and exoskeletons and that kind of thing. So what we're going to do is, um, oops, put that out of order. So we're going to watch this video. And every time you hear the word insect, you're going to ask your kids to either clap or maybe stand up or sit down or, you know, flap their wings, whatever kind of um, activity you want to have them do to identify the word. So what we recommend is that they first watch the video all the way through and you talk with them about the video, about what they've learned, and then you watch it again. And the second time you say, okay, now we're really going to listen for a vocabulary word. Every time you hear insect, I want you guys to do this. So we'll just clap. Um, so I'm just going to play it. It's not very snap. Looks like, Donna, were you about to snap? <laughs> so it's, again, it's a short video, but to give you an idea of how well it works, this activity, and of course it would work with any vocabulary, but just so you can see how it might work synchronously with your kids, we're going to go ahead and do this together. I love exploring in my backyard. There's so many cool animals to find if you look closely, like this bee. A honeybee is an insect. So, Insects are smaller animals with a hard shell called an exoskeleton. They have one, two, three, four, five, six legs. Insects usually have wings and antennae. Bees make honey. I love honey. Here's an ant hill. Ants are insects too. Let's count her legs. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ants live in big groups called colonies. Can you imagine living in a house with hundreds of family members? Whoa, a slimy little earthworm. Did you know that worms aren't insects? Look, they don't have any legs at all, and their bodies are very soft. Watch out, it's a spider web. Spiders are not insects either. They have eight legs. Here's a butterfly. Butterflies are insects. And so is this praying mantis. She sort of looks like a space alien. I told you there's a lot to find in my backyard. Can you think of any other insects? Which is your favorite? So you can see it's very simple, but for this age group, really effective. So I, we probably clapped and snapped maybe six, seven, eight times. So really we'll get that word into their heads, insect, how to spell it, how to say it. Um, and of course, you can also talk about what characterizes an insect, and that goes uh, with that, with that um, standard. All right, so that's that vocabulary scavenger hunt. And then the next one I want to focus on is obtain, evaluate, and communicate information about the basic needs of plants and animals. And this particular one, I'm going to focus on shelter. This particular video focuses on shelter of the four. 
And this one is from nature. So of course, as adults, we're really familiar with nature, but may not be familiar with nature nuggets. So these are nature episodes for little kids. And they don't have um, any words, or they are just uh, really just impressions for the kids to kind of immerse themselves in a nature experience. So this is a really great um, collection for, for asking the kids to make observations. So like the, these are mostly about homes, animal homes, nests. Um, this is about chimpanzees and how they take naps and make their little beds for nap time. So it's really good for that shelter um, perspective of the, of the standard. So we're gonna do See No Wonder, which is from Harvard Project Zero. It's a, a pretty well-known um, teaching strategy. It's, also, it's called See Think Wonder, but I like know better because it, I think it's more clear. So you're asking your kids to observe just what do you see? And there's really no right or wrong answer because different things will stand out to different kids. And of course, at this age group, they learn by repetition. So if you watch the video more than once, they'll see different things. But just really, what do you see in the video? And then the next step is, what do you know? So that's an inference. What your kindergartners have, since they're coming from so many different backgrounds, right? Some pre-K, some from the family, some different language um, homes. So what do they already know about this topic, about basic needs? And then question, what do you wonder? So what are the kids didn't understand or were they curious about? And so that again, gets them thinking as scientists. So it's very simple. They're just asking, answering three questions, you know, your facts, your knowledge, and then your curiosity. So we're gonna uh, watch a little bit of this. We've got a few more minutes. So again, these are short. Um, this is a great video because there's a lot going on and they're all like that. So I'm just gonna ask you guys to, to look at it and be, um, to either share verbally or in the chat box what you saw, what you know about what you saw and then what you wondered about it, what's your question is. <laughs> So there's so much going on in that video. What did you guys, what stood out to you? See, think, wonder. And Wendy, I don't know if you have um, a, a mic, but you're welcome just to speak up or throw things in the chat. So for me, I, you know, everything is underground. Those were all, you know, oh, tunnels. Just, one, just you and I, so. <laughs> yeah, so, the, uh, so there were tunnels, um, you know, uh, and all the animals were underground, which, we tend to think of animals only living on top of the ground. Yeah, isn't that interesting? What and, about, um, so that's what you know, what about what you wonder? Do you have um, to see, you know? Yeah, oh, I wonder, uh, you know, um, how many times different animals run into each other underground. You know, I wonder how many animals share the same space. That's you know? not interesting, but they were all together. Yeah, yeah. so that's, I mean, I think the, kids, the cool thing about this activity is kids make all different observations, because some might, the, oh, I saw, you know, the snake and I wonder if he's going to eat the mouse. And, you know, some people are going to notice the fire. Yeah. So it's, it's a gopher tortoise. So basically the gopher tortoise makes a, a burrow. And then when fire comes, all the animals escape into the burrow to hide from the fire. And then when the fire's over, they all come out. 
so it's just such so much going on predator prey relationships you know the snake is not eating the mouse because they're all hiding from the fire in that moment um and the gopher tortoise is allowing everyone to come into her home so it's a very very cool example of what happens in georgia that's our right our native reptile that's happening right there in, in south georgia so very cool great video in a minute and a half yeah and of course they we get a lot of information from the kids that way so this is another way they can do see no wonder if they wanted to, if they don't want to do it verbally, they can record their information on a padlet, which you can embed, of course. And that's, this is where I got the teaching strategy. So I was just gonna to share that with them. Um, this is Harvard Project Zero, where I got that one. These are some other teaching strategies that we use a lot. So I've actually picked like one or two for every session today, just to kind of give them an idea of, of what kinds of strategies are available. There are hundreds in these locations. And that was pretty much it. I was going to ask them for the, their one thing that they thought they, they might use. Um, well, you know, just me, if there's one thing they could use immediately, what might it be? For me, it's yeah. the paper slides. That's the one that I would want to use. Um, yeah. Anyway. So. Well, thank you. Right on time. Yeah. So, you get a 15-minute break.